Hello everybody, welcome to this massive open online course on solid fluid operations. So, we are discussing about the module on uh, size enlargement of the particle. So, uh, yes, in the previous uh, lecture we are discussing about the uh, importance of size enlargement and uh, what are the basic components uh, are required for the size enlargement we are discussed. Now, in this uh, lecture we will try to uh, understand uh, what is the mechanism of size enlargement. So, in this lecture we will uh, cover uh, the rate process of the size enlargement, basically mechanism of that granulation process and also what is wet and dry granulation. You will see that uh, agglomeration is one of the important uh, you know process for this granulation process. Basically both are same, you can say that agglomeration process and granulation process. So, it is the formation of agglomerates or granules or aggregates you can say by sticking together of a smaller particle and uh, granulation uh, is uh, agglomeration by agitation. So, there are uh, several uh, methods actually available uh, for this you know granulation process like uh, you know that compaction, extrusion, uh, sintering, spray drying, prilling, even itself that you know granulation process. So, uh, we will see in this uh, slide it is shown that there are several method which are following for this granulation, compaction, even prilling process, spray drying process, even sintering process, extrusion process are there. And for you know granulation process you will see that there are basically two types of granulations are uh, there. One is called uh, dry granulation and another is called wet granulation. In the dry granulation you will see that uh, there will be some uh, dry mixing and then uh, slug dislug condition and then compaction based on which that you know granules will be formed. Now, whenever you are going to uh, mix such a dry uh, condition you will see that uh, there will be some shifting and mixing mechanism uh, certain you know phenomena of that mixing to be followed and finally, you have to blend that molecules or particles uh, to get it into a binding and then forming a granules. In between you will see that there will be certain you know slag and dislag conditions some you know uh, granules will be sometimes it will be uh, making a bigger one and then breaking into a finer one again and then uh, uh, coalescence and then you know breaking up. So, these are all uh, basically that you know slag dislag condition uh, based on that you know uh, degree of mixing, degree of, degree of shifting, degree of milling of that you know. Uh, operating condition, even what is the optimum size of that product to be obtained based on which that slug dislug condition should be controlled. And then compaction uh, is basically again that in this process you will see that depends on that shifting mixing processes, even uh, if you are doing that compaction for that granulation process, uh, what is the you know uh, mechanism of that compaction with either by rolling uh, or some other you know compaction method to be followed whether uh, it can be you know milling or sizing and uh, finally, you have to do the blending. So, slug, dislag and compaction both will be the same uh, way that will be done and finally, it will be compaction to make that you know free or dry free or granules there. So, this is the dry granulation process whereas, uh, wet granulation process there may be you know two types it will be aqueous and some will be non aqueous. So, in that case again that you know aqueous non aqueous cases there uh, of course, that mechanism will be like that. So, molecules will be shifting, mixing and then blending, drying, milling all those operations to be there ok. And uh, in this case as per that restriction to the course level for UG only granulation process will be discussed and you will see that here in this uh, picture to soon one uh, uh, schematic of uh, granulation you will see that a typical agglomeration. Uh, circuit utilized in the processing of pharmaceuticals that involves both granulation and compression techniques. So, here you will see that uh, initially that uh, feed powders with ingredients that will be kept in a bean and from that bean it will be passed through that a blender or mixer. So, all the ingredients to be mixed here and uh, before sending it to the you know granulator which is called that uh, granulation equipment is that it will be pre-mixed with that uh, binding fluid or other uh, you know binding agents if it is required or uh, you can say that uh, there uh, before sending it to that it will be halt in a bin. So, that if is there any controlling of that you know 
binding liquid or resin to be required that you can done here. And then uh, you will see that uh, in this granulator you have to mix uh, uh, your here in this granulator by certain mechanism based on which that you know granulation or granules will be formed there. So, with that binding liquid whenever that particles after blending or mixing it will be coming to that you know granulator then you will see that uh, you know bigger size particles will be formed. After that bigger size particles along with that smaller also uh, particles will be coming or will be you know allowed to pass to the classifier where you will see that uh, uh, granule will be separated from that you know which are not actually uh, converted into granule forms that will be separated. So, based on this classifier action uh, this uh, granules will be separated and then uh, uh, it will be passed uh, through again uh, that granule uh, bin and after that from that granule bin it will be passed to that uh, tabulating press and where that desired size of the products will be obtained. Whereas, uh, you know other uh, the components from the classifiers which are not actually uh, formed as granule those will be uh, recycled and before recycling it will be milled again because some you know granules will be formed so that uh, it will be separated uh, by that milling process or uh, it will be broken up into a milling uh, equipment. Uh, so, through these mills it will be passed through again to the feed powders. So, here uh, this, uh, this is the simple schematic uh, of the granulation process which is being used in pharmaceutical industry. Now, we are talking about first that mechanism of wet granulation, how that wet granulation being happened. Generally, four key mechanisms uh, you know contribute to size enlargement uh, by this uh, wet granulation process. Here, these are uh, generally you will see that weighting and nucleation uh, stays, then uh, uh, growth stays and consolidation stays and attrition or break stays. So, these are uh, four you will see that four stages uh, is generally followed to get that granules. So, what are uh, these uh, actually uh, steps and how that steps are uh, actually performed uh, that depends on what are the size of the particles, what is the density of the particles, whether that particles will be you know attrited uh, during that process or not, how that particles will be dispersed in that you know granulator even what is the flowability characteristics of that granulator. Also, it depends on you know uh, voyages uh, inside the granulator. Also, some other operating variables uh, uh, you know that uh, how that binding liquids will be mixed with that you know powders either by drop wise or then if it is drop wise uh, then how that drop will be you know penetrating on the bed of that uh, you know uh, granular beds. And then uh, what is the mechanism or how you can calculate how much penetration will happen and what is the you know degree of penetration and uh, that depends on what all those phenomena to be considered there. And uh, also you will see that uh, this uh, you know granulation process this four stages uh, or five stages there uh, whatever final stage you can say that it depends on that uh, requirement of the design of that granules. So, uh, these are uh, four basic stages that will be considered for that uh, wet granulation process. Now, uh, first stage is that weighting and uh, nucleation you know stage. In this uh, stage you will see that uh, voids between particles you will see that uh, here uh, uh, particles are there between particles there will be a voidage. Now, that voidage uh, will be replaced by uh, liquid which is added as a liquid drop that liquid drop will be basically that binding agent uh, liquid. So, here uh, this uh, whatever voidage will be there in between particles that will be filled up with the bonding uh, liquids or binding uh, solvent you can say that will be supplied as a drop wise or spray. Now, weighting is governed by the surface tension basically of the liquid and uh, you know contact angle with the particles. So, whenever binding liquid uh, that will be you know added to that uh, particles you will see that this uh, you know weighting uh, of these particles by that binding agent will change that you know their uh, interparticle interaction and that uh, interparticle interaction will be governed by uh, the surface tension of the liquid and also contact angle with the particles. So, in this case here uh, you will see that uh, nucleation is also one important uh, you know stage here. In this case this nucleation uh, basically applied to the initial coalescence 
and growth of the primary particles in the immediate vicinity of the uh, larger wetting drops. So, whenever wetting drops will be falls into that uh, powder surface, you will see that immediately there will be a some you know that uh, growth of the uh, particles uh, just by binding that particles uh, with that uh, you know binding solvent. So, this is uh, called that uh, initial growth or nucleation stage. And then uh, you will see that uh, there will be a certain rate at which that weighting should be uh, you know followed uh, in that uh, you know uh, weighting and nucleation stage. Now, uh, actually the rate at which that weighting occurs is important in granulation which is uh, known as uh, waste burn equation okay, by which you can calculate uh, what will be the rate of that weighting that you can calculate. So, this basically depends on that how much you know penetration happens or that is binding liquids how much it will be penetrated inside the particular bed. So, that will give you that uh, you know uh, rate at which that granulation occurs. So, basically you will see that whenever drop will be falled onto the surface of that you know particulate bed you will see that immediately that uh, solvent or you know binding agent or liquid it will be spread over the surface of this particulate bed. And uh, during that you know spreading how much it will be spreaded that will be represented by z okay that is called you know penetration uh, distance of the liquid into the powder and this uh, you know penetration depth or penetration distance will be changing with respect to time of course uh, with respect to time uh, you know gradually that it will be this particulate bed will be weighted by that you know binding liquid so uh, in that case this uh, gradually that distance will be increasing so what will be the rate of increasing that penetration distance with respect to time that is uh, basically the rate at which that granulation occurs. So, dz by dt we can express this uh, you know change of that penetration uh, distance with respect to time and this depends on what that rp, rp is basically what the average pore radius, what is the average pore radius inside that you know particle in the particulate beds. So, uh, this uh, the average port radius it is a actually function of packing density as well as size distribution of the powder. So, that uh, pore radius depend on how it will be distributed that is particles in the particulate bed will be distributed as well as packing density. So, more packing density it will give you the less pores and also accordingly what will be the average size that can be calculated. And then you know that gamma, gamma is here basically the surface tension of the liquid and then uh, cos theta, cos theta that will give you the what, what is the contact angle. So, gamma cos theta will give you that surface tension there in that particular direction of the penetration. And then here uh, also it depends on that viscosity of the uh, liquid and uh, also the distance of that you know penetration. So, here this uh, the change of that penetration distance with respect to time that can be represented by dz by dt and uh, uh, it will be you know defined by this as per this equation of Washburn equation. So, it will be rp gamma cos theta by 4 mu z or after integration you can express this equation as uh, z will be equal to root over rp gamma cos theta by 2 mu z into t t is the time here time uh, for that penetration get up to a certain distance. Now, you will see that there are several uh, stages of this weighting initially you will see that uh, the uh, drop will be allowed to you know fall into that you know surface of the powder bed here like this and then uh, whenever one drop will be falls into the powder bed and then subsequently another drop will you know come into that uh, initial drop and it will coalescence and then it will uh, you know become a bigger size of the droplet and then you will see that it will be spread over the powder bed. And then you will see that uh, after this you know that gradual spreading drops on the powder surface you will see that that binding liquid will be you know entering into that uh, whole bed of this powder just as a channeling. Okay. And it is actually uh, passing through that pores of that powder materials. Uh, that means gap between the uh, particles in the powder bed. So, binder will be dispersed by weighting and capillary penetration there and then after that uh, this binder will be dispersed uh, also by the mixing process there. 
So, you will see that initially whenever drop will be coming onto the surface of that powder bed, it will be uh, spreading over the surface and then the dispersion of that you know binding liquid will be done by mechanical mixing. So, stages of waiting for fine powder compared to the drop size it is shown here. Again you will see that drop penetration at a moving powder bed this is happen when there will be a gap between two particles and then binding agents will be spreading inside that you know gap of that particles as a simply capillary flow. Okay, so, liquid flows through a narrow pores here it is shown. Now, whenever drops will fall here that will be you know spreading over the powder surface. So, there you will see that powder compaction will be happened. And here spreading of drops you will see that and then uh, drops and getting penetration. Uh, penetration, penetration okay, inside that uh, you know powder bed at a certain flow rate that is B. And then penetration of particles into the uh, fluid happens like this here with respect to time. And uh, also sometimes you will see that during that penetration some chemical probing of powder will happen. You will see that uh, some uh, you know chemicals will be attached to that powder surface or particle surface and it will be sticked on that you know uh, particles as a molecule here uh, and uh, there will be making a layer over the surface of that you know particles. That will be you know that making a bridge that is called uh, you know liquid bridge formation of liquid bridge by just probing of that chemical into the particle surface. And then uh, you will see that whenever a drop uh, of a certain known volume let it be V d is uh, when uh, placed onto a small powder bed with uh, certain porosity let it be epsilon b and the time taken for the drop to completely uh, you know sink into the powder bed then uh, you uh, will be able to find out what would be the you know penetration time for that known uh, volume of uh, binding liquid to be supplied there. So, in that case uh, T p can be you know obtained by this uh, correlation okay, which is given by you know Habgood et al 2003. Here, uh, uh, you will see that it depends on that uh, Vd that means known volume of that drop and also the porosity bed porosity and the average particle size and also surface tension and contact angle of the liquid with the solid particle. And uh, here this Rp can be calculated that depends on uh, porosity itself and also uh, Sauter mean uh, particle diameter. I think we have discussed that what is particle diameter. It is basically volume to surface ratio mean particle diameter that we have discussed earlier also how to calculate the Sauter mean bubble diameter or Sauter mean particle diameter there. So, it depends on uh, you know that this Sauter mean uh, particle diameter and also porosity of the bed. If there are uh, not uniform particle size then uh, you have to consider what will be the you know sphericity of that particle. That sphericity of the particle of course, you can calculate if it is in different shape. So, according to that shape you can calculate what is the sphericity as per definition that is given earlier. Now, uh, some important point that you have to remember in this case you can improve this weighting uh, if you know it gives a narrower uh, granular size distribution and improved product quality through better control over the granulation process. Okay. So, here this weighting or uh, nucleation stage improved uh, weighting is uh, desirable as it gives a narrower granular uh, size distribution and uh, then improved product quality through a better control over the granulation process. Also this uh, rate of weighting you will see that depends on that viscosity uh, surface tension even uh, you will see that contact angle in uh, even you will see that uh, size of the pores uh, within the powder. Now, the rate of this weighting it will increase with uh, reducing viscosity, it may increase with surface tension with increasing uh, surface tension, it may increase uh, you know by minimizing that contact angle and also it can be increased by increasing the size of pores you know that within the powder. And uh, small particles give small pores and large particles give of course, that uh, large pores and also this wider particle size distribution will give rise to uh, smaller pores. Large pores ensure a high rate of liquid penetration, but you know give rise to a lower extent of weighting. So, this is very important point here that large pores you cannot be suitably you know considered uh, for getting that better weighting. 
then uh, drop controlled nucleation this is the second uh, of controlling phenomena where uh, that you can control that nucleation stage. Now, in this case uh, there will be some uh, phenomena or some condition based on which you can control this nucleation regime. There will be certain ide ideal stage to have this condition. Now, in this case each droplet should land on the powder without touching other droplets and sink quickly into the powder to form a new nucleus granule. This is the you know ideal statement based on which that you can have this you know condition of that drop controlled nucleation design. Okay? So, here always that drop when whatever it will be you know uh, allowed to wet that you know surface of that powder bed it should be individual without interacting each other. That means, droplet will not interact with each other and uh, also you can say that uh, whenever it will be tossed uh, onto the surface of the powder uh, or uh, bed powder surface you will see immediately it should sink into the powder. So, that that uh, new nucleus immediately will form. So, this is the case. So, these ideal conditions are called the drop controlled nucleation regime and it occurs generally at low penetration time and low dimensionless spray flux that is denoted by psi a. And uh, this uh, psi a that is called uh, spray flux can be uh, calculated by this uh, you know equation given by Lister et al. 2001. Here uh, the derivation is not given because uh, this is not uh, a scope to your study. Here uh, only just you have to you know try to understand uh, that spray flux depends on what? It depends on that solution flow rate that is q. It depends on the powder velocity in the spray zone. It depends on you know that the width of the spray and also dd that means average drop diameter uh, which is you know falling onto the surface of the powder bed. At low sp spray flux if it is very less than 1 then uh, you will see that drop footprints will not overlap and uh, each drop will form a separate nucleus granule. So, this is one of the important that as low as possible this spray flux to be controlled so that you can have separate nucleus granule. At high spray flux if it is more more than 1 then there will significant overlap of drops that will heat the powder bed and that is not actually suitable for that operation. And weighting of powder is uh, by spray drops and number of nuclei how much nuclei will be formed and uh, what will be the you can say uh, spray flux value uh, what is the fraction of that powder surface at actually will be weighted by that you know spray drops that also we can you know calculate uh, by uh, have good at all you know principle. So, as per uh, that uh, have good at all uh, principle at a given spray flux value the fraction of the powder surface that is weighted by spray drops as it passes beneath the spray zone is given by F weighted that will be equal to 1 minus exponent of minus psi a. Here this psi a is basically the spray flux and the fraction of nuclei how many number of you know uh, nuclei to be formed and what is the fraction of that total nuclei formed by that n number of drops can be calculated by using again uh, given by Habgut et al. 2004 as per this equation. So, here f n that means here uh, uh, the fraction of nuclei that is uh, formed by that n drops that can be calculated by this equation. This is also depends on that you know spray flux and here n, n is basically the number of drops and psi a is called the spray flux. And then uh, nucleation uh, resigned map that is also important to know because how that you know time of penetration will be depending on that pre flux and uh, based on which you can say that a different uh, stages or regime that you can have during that uh, waiting and nucleation. And based on which you can control also whether uh, if it is intermediate or drop controlled region or mechanical dispersion regime or uh, there will be no actually change of uh, you know distribution it is required and also sometimes it is required to have that narrower nuclei size distribution in that case where at what time of that penetration to be allowed 
or what will be the spray plugs to be followed or uh, you know that allowed. Also uh, sometimes you will see that uh, whenever binding liquid will be you know uh, spreading over that powder bed there will be formation of cake uh, which may reduce the pores inside the bed and they, are, they may hinder the penetration of that uh, binding liquid there. So, in that case in which cases or uh, what would be the uh, spray flux uh, that means uh, spray uh, flow rate and uh, also what would be the time of that penetration uh, from which you can easily interpret. So, here in this uh, picture it is shown that uh, that TP versus shy A that means time of penetration versus spray flux. There are different regions you will see that drop control region, caking region, narrower nuclear size distribution region, intermediate region and no change in distribution even mechanical dispersion region. So, all those regimes depends on that shy A value and TP. For a particular suppose you, you need to you know uh, control that operation as a uh, you know drop control region at this point. So, you have to have that spray flux as uh, this value and accordingly what will be the time of penetration that you can have. So, combination of this time of penetration and spray flux then you can say that your operation will be controlled by drop. Okay. So, here this called drop controlled uh, region. So, three you will see that nucleation regimes can be defined here drop controlled, shear controlled and intermediate zone. Shear controlled basically the mechanical dispersion where it happens. So, it is called shear controlled and also intermediate between these two drop controlled and you know shear controlled design. Drop controlled nucleation occurs when one drop forms one nucleus and uh, uh, and should occur when there is both like this here low spray flux if you are considering here low spray flux the spray density is low and relatively few drops will be overlapping. And uh, for fast penetration time suppose here your penetration time will be very high. So, in that case the drop must penetrate completely into the powder bed before it tosses either other drops on the powder surface or new drops arriving from the spray. Okay. And also if either criterion is not met, the powder mixing and shear characteristics will dominate as mechanical dispersion regime. So, here in this case other than this mechanical dispersion regime, you have to you know follow these two condition. So, beyond this condition all will be as a mechanical dispersion regime. Okay. So, in the case of uh, you know mechanical dispersion regime you will see that liquid binder can only be dispersed by powder, shear and agitation there. There will be no other drop controlled or intermediate control of that you know um, uh, dispersion. And then uh, granule consolidation stage uh, here uh, depends on that uh, granule density and also you will see that uh, whether that packing of that uh, bed will be very closer or not that is very important. So, in this stage the granule density will be increased and that will be caused by closer packing of primary particles. It determines the porosity and density of the final granules. The granule porosity epsilon and the liquid level denoted by W that means concentration you can say control the granule uh, saturation that is defined by S here which is the fraction of pore space that will be filled by the liquid. So, that saturation will be defined by W rho S into 1 minus epsilon by rho L epsilon where W is called that liquid level and uh, rho S is basically the solid density and epsilon is the porosity of the bed and rho L is the uh, liquid density of that binding agent. The saturation here you will see that increases as the porosity decreases and once the saturation exceeds 100 percent, you will see that uh, you have to see that further consolidation pulses there and that consolidation will uh, give you that liquid push to the you know granule surface uh, which make that surface wet and also you can say that surface uh, wetness that will uh, cause the dramatic change in granule growth rates. So, very important here you have to control this saturation. So, the saturation of course, will increases as the porosity decreases. Now, whether we are going to you know increase the saturation beyond 100 percent or not, 
okay. So, that also uh, to be you know understood well sometimes you know if you are having that uh, exceeded that 100 percent saturation you will see that uh, there will be a uh, kinetic energy transfer because of that flow of that you know fluid over the surface of that particles and they are uh, immediately it will be you know wet that surface of the particle and also uh, you know that uh, there will be change of that uh, you know granule growth rates. So, as much as possible that the saturation region uh, should be near about you know 100 so that that will be as optimum value. You know growth stage due to you will see that uh, agitation and dispersion of kinetic energy that we are talking about that granules coalescence by collision and you will see that create an increased surface area by bonding. Now, as granules grow so do the internal forces trying to pull the granule apart and it is only possible to predict a critical maximum size of the granule beyond which that coalescence is not possible during that collision. So, this is one of the important point that you have to remember that during that uh, growth of that granules you will see that internal forces trying to pull the granule apart. Okay. Now, if it is you know allowed to apart that particle then you will gran your granule will not form. So, they are sometimes that some critical maximum size of the granules to be you know maintained so that internal forces will be acting over the particles or between the particles so that the apartness of that granules will not happen. Okay. Uh, that means, here uh, you have to you are you are going to that uh, you know uh, control the coalescence or collision uh, between the particles. So, in this case so there will be a certain parameter based on which that you can uh, say whether this coalescence will occur or not. So, parameter which determines whether coalescence will occur is a Stokes number which is defined by this equation here uh, rho v d y 16 mu where rho is the granule density here v is the approach velocity of that particles okay, or granules you will see that d is the diameter of the granules and mu is the viscosity of the liquid which is used as a binder. The Stokes number is a measure of the ratio of collisional kinetic energy to the energy dissipated through viscous dissipation. So, you have to control that internal forces or collision or coalescence based on this Stokes number. Okay. So, for this for coalescence to occur the Stokes number must be less than a critical value of that Stokes number which is represented by that you know S t star how to calculate that critical Stokes number beyond which that you can control that your uh, coalescence. So, here this S t star that will be the 1 plus 1 by E into L n h by H a. What is this uh, E is basically the coefficient of restitution for the collision. This uh, you know coefficient will give you that whether collision will be happened or about to happen. And then H, H is basically the thickness of coated powder of each granule. If suppose any granule is uh, produced just by binding liquid making the layer over that uh, you know granule surface uh, by that binding liquid. Now, what is the thickness of that coated layer of H, H granule that you have to uh, you know measure and then H A is basically the measure of surface roughness of the granule whatever granule will form it what will be the surface roughness uh, that is. So, this you know critical Stokes number uh, can be calculated by this equation. Now, you will see that based on this criterion three regimes of granule growth are identified for bash systems with relatively low agitation intensity. So, here you will see that you have to widely or wisely you can say that select that velocity of that spray that means spray flux that you have to consider in such way that uh, based on that you have to calculate what will the Stokes number. Now, if this Stokes number is coming beyond this uh, critical uh, Stokes number then there will be a, you know mechanical agitation ok there will be mechanical agitation and these are the non inertial inertial and coating regimes will be there if that Stokes number will be 
you know uh, less than this uh, critical Stokes number. Once the average Stokes number for the powder mass in the granules is uh, comparable with the critical value, granule growth is balanced by breakage and growth continuous by coating of primary particles onto the existing granules. Okay. Then uh, another stage it is called granule deformation. In case of in high agitation intensity systems, one cannot ignore the granule deformation there. Two types of granule behavior that occur depending on granule deformation. You will see that one will be called steady growth behavior, another will be called induction behavior. In steady growth behavior, you will see that it occurs when the granule size increase is roughly proportional to granule uh, you know penetration time. Okay? And also induction behavior, the induction growth occurs when there is a long period during which no increase in size occurs. Here uh, some stages of this you know mechanism of granule coalescence for low and high deformability systems is shown here. Now you will see that here two colliding granules will be there approaching to each other and then you will see that uh, they will colliding to each other and making high uh, value of deformation, deformation at contact and then here it will be rebound, then some coalescence, then rebound and then coalescence. There are different stages which happen continuously inside the you know uh, granulator. So, mechanism of granule coalescence for low and high deformative system, here you will see that rebound occurs for average granule size that will be greater than the critical granule size that is k. That means k is basically the deformability and here granule structure resulting from a low and a high deformability system here. This is for low and this is for high deformability system. Okay. Then growth regime. All types of granule growth can be you know described using the saturation and deformation Stokes number and the granule growth regimes map. Here it is shown that there is a granule growth regime map and it actually uh, basically you know give you that idea of that increasing deformation number based on that you know uh, maximum saturation condition. So, this uh, the Stokes number at this deformation condition will be defined by this equation where uc uh, will be is equal to representative collision velocity in the granulator and rho z is called the average granule density and y d is the dynamic yield stress of the granule. And this deformation uh, Stokes number that will uh, uh, presented based on that you know maximum saturation uh, condition which is defined as W rho s into 1 minus epsilon mean by rho l epsilon mean. So, based on this uh, you know condition of that deformation number and saturation we are having different uh, flow regimes. Some will be dry free powder flowing and then you will there will be a crumb, there will be a slurry and steady growth, there will be rapid growth, there will be induction, there will be nucleation only. So, based on that at low saturation condition you will see that and also for low deformation uh, uh, Stokes number you can have this nucleation only. Whereas, uh, you will see that for maximum saturation that means here you will see that at higher uh, saturation condition that induction can be obtained based on that lower value of uh, Stokes number. And in this case the uh, lower uh, deformation Stokes number will decrease that induction at high saturation. Then uh, uh, is the granule breakage stage. The breakage uh, also called that fragmentation is the fracture of a granule to form two or more pieces. Here attrition also called erosion is the reduction in size of a granule by loss of primary particles from its surface. In practice you will see that breakage may be controlled by altering the granule properties such as you know by increasing the fracture toughness, by increasing resistance uh, to attrition, by making changes to the process example like reduce agitation uh, intensity like this. And uh, so, these are all about that weight granulation process. So, there are several uh, that stages are there uh, mainly that four stages are you know described here. Uh, in uh, details that uh, so you have to know this mechanism of that you know granulation process okay now uh, how that dry granulation occurs that also uh, you know in a nutshell can be explained here 
the process of dry granulation actually uh, depends on the interparticle bond formation, granule bond formation. You will see that uh, characterized uh, in different stages, uh, which usually occur in the following order like particle rearrangement, particle deformation, particle fragmentation, particle bonding and then finally, plastic and elastic deformation. Here there are different stages of this you know dry granulation is shown here. Okay. One is the rearrangement here, then deformation will occur and then fragmentation will be happened and then bonding just coming to that each other, there will be you know intermolecular action uh, based on that uh, van der Waals force that will be bonding creating and then plastic deformation uh, will be happened and based on which there will be a fragmentation. You will see that particle rearrangement generally occurs initially as powder particles begin filling that void spaces by either uh, air or some other fluid. Generally air being uh, used, so air begins to leave the powder blends interstitial spaces and particles begin to move closer together. And then particle deformation occurs as compression forces are increased and this deformation uh, you will see that increases the points of contact between particles where bonding occurs and described as a you know particle deformation. Okay. And then uh, particle will be fragmented into a finer uh, one in that uh, you know uh, fragmentation stage there you will see that this occurs at increased compression force levels there in the mixer. And at this stage particle fracturing you will see that creates multiple new surface sites and uh, you will see that additional contact points will be creating and also there will be a potential bonding sites will create during this fragmentation. After that this particle bonding will occur when plastic deformation and fragmentation occur. It is generally accepted that bonding takes place at the molecular level and that is due to the effect of van der Waal force that uh, told earlier. And then final stage elastic and plastic deformations you will see that when powder granules undergo an applied force or stress or stress force is released from the granules. In this case you will see that a deformation will actually you know not uh, totally recover after the stress is released uh, which is called the plastic deformation whereas the granules attempt to return to their original shape or form which will be described by the elastic deformation. Okay. So, elastic and plastic deformations can occur there simultaneously, but one effect of course will be predominant to the others. So, one effect will of course will be dominates to the other. So, here this elastic and plastic deformation both will be happening uh, because of that you know applied stress okay, that is released from the uh, granules or applied to the granules. Here uh, one curve is given that stress versus strain there. So, uh, what is the limit of that elastic deformation and that plastic deformation that depends on that critical value of that applied stress. So, I think uh, you understood here some extent of that mechanism of that you know granulation process. Uh, there are two uh, process one is uh, wet granulation another is uh, dry granulation. And for uh, you know wet granulation we learned there are several stages like you know that growth and uh, nucleation stage uh, even uh, then uh, there will be you know that consolidation stage and then uh, breaking stage uh, like this. And uh, also uh, for dry granulation there are also several stages that you have learned some will be you know that uh, collision and then you will see that fragmentation and then you know elastic and plastic deformation. So, uh, 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 by this you know two uh, mechanism generally this uh, all the granulation process either wet or uh, dry uh, depends on. Also other several factors uh, for this granulation process efficiency will be depending on like what is the size of that particles, what is the uh, what type of uh, bonding liquid you are using, whether it is high viscous or nose, whether surface tension uh, will be less or higher, even what is the contact angle between that you know uh, liquid and uh, particle surface all those factors will you know give you that you know efficiency of the granulation process. So, uh, thank you for uh, your attention next lecture will be uh, on based on uh, basic equipment for the granulation. Thank you have a nice day.